Okay, Houston, right. we've had a problem here. Mrs. Houston, say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. The question that we all talk about when we talk about earthquakes, because we don't have no problem, Houston, is how strong they are. And, and always the press goes with the big, big earthquakes, but how do we measure the strength of an earthquake? What does that actually mean? That's what we're going to talk about today. All right. Now, first of all, it was difficult many, many years ago to measure, like, bad earthquake. But we don't really know what does, what does bad mean. Turns out there's two ways we can measure an earthquake, with its intensity or its magnitude. Now, magnitude is how strong it is where it originates. But if you have an earthquake right here, we're in the middle right here in uh, southern Illinois. Actually, this is, an extra, this is called the New Madrid earthquake. It's an interesting earthquake that happened in uh, 1915 or something like that. And uh, the intensity was felt, obviously, closest to here. But this earthquake was felt as far as you know, Wisconsin and stuff like that. These, of course, they, this would be the, so the intensity. What is intensity? Intensity varies with distance. Now, and that makes sense if you think about it, because you know we here in Houston, we don't feel earthquakes in California. But if you're in California, you feel earthquakes in California. The closer you are to the epicenter, the focus of the earthquake, the more you're going to feel the earthquake. But magnitude is the strength, the absolute strength of the earthquake. So how do we go about figuring out how big the earthquake is? Well, it turns out what you do is you do a little chart. What you do is you, you, you measure, remember the P's and the S waves. What you do is you find the P wave. The P wave is the first wave. Remember, it's the fastest wave. And you find out, oops, you find out where the, the moment it starts. And then you start counting the clock. One, two, three, ten seconds or whatever. And then you find when the S wave happens. And you find the difference between these two numbers, time. All right? So the time, we put it on the SP time graph. All right? We find out how... Uh, how long it took to get there. And, and let me actually say a note here. What that, the SP time then also gives you a distance. So two seconds, four seconds, six seconds. So in this particular example that we have right here, it was taking 10, I don't know, whatever this many seconds right here. It was a little about 200 kilometers away. Make sense? And then the second thing you do is you then find the amplitude of the graph. All right, so the highest amplitude that you can get. So if you measure this, is this distance right here, doing from here to here, right? They measure this height. So they measure how tall that is. They plot that onto this graph, and then they make a line between here and here. And then, whoop, it cuts across, in this case, at a 5. Now, there's a scale. We'll talk about what the scale means, but it's a scale from basically 0 to 10. And most earthquakes are down here. They're 1s and such. But then a 5, 5 is a pretty good earthquake. And you just draw a line, and you can figure out how strong an earthquake is. That's how they determine the magnitude of the earthquake. They use something called the Richter scale to determine how big the earthquake is. And speaking of the Richter scale, here are our earthquakes. Just as a note, if the earthquake is 2.9 or less, guess what? There's thousands of those every day in this scale, this 1 to 10 scale. Um, 49,000 a year, that's a lot. 3 to 3.9. Strong earthquakes, 6 to 6.9. There's 120 a year. This across the earth, right? And then a great earthquake, which is 8 or more, about 1 a year. You could have more than one, but that's typically. Major ones, you get 18 a year. Just uh, as we're making this right now, I, I saw there was an earthquake in this range in uh, Puerto Rico um, just uh, a few days ago, maybe a week ago, as I make this. So let's talk about what factors cause the destruction of an earthquake, particularly in a big one, right, those big earthquakes. Here are, are uh, six different things that cause interesting things that happen in an earthquake. This is fascinating to me. The first one is how you build a building. Now, it turns out the worst way to build a building is the way that this building is built, with just concrete blocks. When earthquakes happen, these buildings collapse. The mo most people die in an earthquake in buildings. The building or some structure collapses on them and they're crushed. And so when you go to earthquake scenes, or you're, I'm sure at some point in our life uh, it could be happening while we're even in class, there's going to be some earthquake where some people are killed, sadly. And usually they're dying in a building where the building collapses on them because the building was built poorly, and it shakes and shakes, and the building can't withstand the shaking, and then people inside, and it's sad. Uh, well, how do you build a building that's earthquake, not proof might be the right word, but earthquake resistant? Well, you put, like, 
shock absorbers on the bottom, literally, right? So that the shaking is built in. You dig it down and you, you see these huge springs. I was once at a place where I had a chance to see the bottom of, of a really tall building and they've got springs that are like bigger than your house at the bottom of these things to deal with, um, deal with earthquakes. Notice they've also put a birdcage interlocking steel frame that is going to try and keep the building together. So it's really, um, they even have weights in here at, on top of them to reduce movement, especially skyscrapers. Can be, so you can build a building that's earthquake resistant. The other thing that has become probably the most important thing to do, if you're going to build something out of concrete, you should do it with a rebar. Now, I don't know if you know what rebar is, but rebar is these little metal rods. And these metal rods are all set up like in these little cones. What they're about to do is they're about to pour concrete through this whole thing. And the concrete then will have the iron bars embedded in between and the iron bars really hold the concrete together and it resists shaking. They've probably got iron bars going all the way through this pattern, right? We see the ones that are sticking out right now, but that makes it way, way stronger and more resistant to shaking. So that's one thing. So it's one thing that causes, is if you poor buildings cause real big problems. So we have an earthquake in, in a developing world uh, if the construction is poor, you see a lot more damage. But if in the developed world where they really think and thought this through, um, then it can make a huge difference. And the second thing that can happen in an earthquake that often happens because in cities there are buried pipes. The pipes have gas and oil and all kinds of things. What often happens in a in, is the fire, right? A fire happens in an earthquake and then the fire, it's, 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 the earthquake causes the fire and then that's what damages property, people, etc. So fires can be a huge problem in an earthquake and the, the, the picture we're seeing right here is the great San Francisco earthquake which created a huge fire. The fire killed more people than the earthquake uh, and that's, that's where the sadness happened there. Um, another thing that matters is the type of rock which the earthquake propagates through. Now there's different kinds of rock. We know that with soil and such. And the worst kind of rock for a earthquake is soft sandy soil. So if you have a house and you build it in soft sandy soil, like this guy right here, uh, when the earthquake happens, what happens, and there's a fancy term, we call this amplification. So if a wave, this wave right here, this wave comes through here and it gets into the sandy soil, the wave amplifies, which means it makes it bigger, which means the ground shakes more, which means that the house goes down. And if you have a stronger solid bedrock, all right, mild. See, look what happens to my, my waves. Because you want to build your house on solid bedrock, not shifting sand. I guess there's a metaphor from a Christian perspective. Build your house on the rock, not on the sand, and the winds and the waves and the earthquakes will not knock it down. And again, notice how it gets amplified more and more. And sandy soil, like out here, water saturated with sand and mud is the worst. That's going to get the greatest shaking. So right on the beach, very bad, because obviously it's going to be mostly sandy soil and very loose and unconsolidated. Which leads us to maybe the worst of them all is the tsunamis. Now tsunamis, um, this isn't a real picture, by the way. This is an image that someone drew. But tsunamis, big, you know, wave thing, and an earthquake causes that. So let's talk about what causes an earth or a tsunami. Earthquakes, tsunamis, <laughs> are caused by an earthquake, usually under the ocean. So, and then that, what happens is a huge amount of land is displaced. So the land changes, and it then creates a trough or possibly a big wave. The energy goes up, and it makes this huge wave. The wave moves towards the land, moves towards the land, and actually, interesting, as it moves toward it, what happens is the water recedes significantly from its normal location. If you are ever, and I mean this seriously, if you are ever at a beach and then the water recedes a lot, get out of there. Because what's going to happen is this is going to happen and that wave is going to come and cascade over and destroy wherever you're at. Uh, very important. Um, the worst incident, maybe the worst natural disaster in the history of the world, was the 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami. It was sometimes called the Sumatran tsunami. These are people who, I'm sad to say, probably did not last much after this. Uh, this was, it killed 200,000, maybe 240,000 people as it propagated throughout the whole area. It started right here, so right here's India, and here is, you know, Thailand and Myanmar, Myanmar, how do you pronounce that? Uh, the earthquake was here, and it was an earthquake of 9.0 magnitude, so it's a very large earthquake. And what happens, I mean, like a devastating earthquake, it created a tsunami that went, and these red places are the people who significantly, um, yeah, it was bad. And 200,000 people on the coast were killed because the tsunami, it was, and there was not an early warning system, 
and it was it was all bad. And how do we measure earthquakes? Well, when we get that magnitude number that we talked about a little bit ago, it's called the Richter scale. Sometimes the Mercalli scale, same idea. And it's a scale basically from uh, 0 to 10. Here we have 2, so it's kind of weak here. But here we can see the number of earthquakes right here, about a million that are 2. And they get further and further up. And how many do we get um, every year? Um, not that much. This is 0.1 a year, so like one every 100 years or something like that. You get a 9, and 10s are absolute devastation. Largest recorded earthquake was in Chile in 1960. Uh, probably other ones that are big. Uh, you can see kind of ideas. And it, let me talk about this scale that's important to understand. The Bobby don't understand. Um, if you have a 5, a uh, Richter scale of 5, compared to a 6, a 6 is 10 times bigger than a 5. So it's what we call a logarithmic scale. And if I was comparing to a 5, a 7 would be 100 times more, an 8 would be 1,000 times more, and a 9 would be 10,000 times more, and a, this would be, of course, 100,000 times. So it's what we call a logarithmic scale. And uh, so they go up by a factor of 10 for each number that you go up. So the difference between a 5 and a 6 is a lot. The difference between 8 and a 9 is a lot. And 9 or 10 is a huge amount. So when you see a number and you see 5.1 versus 5.9, 5.9 is a lot worse than 5.1. So keep that in mind because it's a logarithmic scale. So yeah, Houston, uh, these are the things that cause earthquakes. And some of them can be absolutely devastating. We don't have a problem. We'll see you in class.